Welcome to a new season of Cozy Womb Podcast. This is season five of Cozy Womb. My name is Shan, mom of the girls. This is a podcast where we talk about surviving parenting, uh, the realness about prego-ness, and giving really good tips on being our best parent and evolving every day. So if that's what you're looking for, you're at the right place. Welcome back to Closing One Podcast. This is Season 5, Episode 13. Why do I have to say it 4,508 times? Parents, I understand because I go through this. Why do I have to repeat myself more than once to these kids? Why are my kids resisting the words that come out of my mouth? (sighs) This is the part of parenting that I would. I knew I was not going to enjoy. Okay. Okay. Welcome to Mama Shan tip or question. Is it a tip or is it a question? Let's see. Growing up, I had one strict parent and one very lenient parent who was super passive, okay? And living in the house with both of them was like knowing who to go to to ask certain things, who to avoid until they left for the day, until they went to sleep, and um, who to go with to have more options on what they could do. Uh, When it was just my mom, uh, oh, kid life was super easy because she was in, opinionated about too much she wasn't you know put the foot down ish about anything I never got whoopings or been grounded my mom shrugged a lot of what my brothers and I did and she repeated herself too many times which um helped produce a lot of resentment that I had towards her not on purpose but unfortunately seeing your mom be walked on all the time and not standing up for herself it does something to you on the inside it makes you um, really irritated and very defensive because what you really want to do is you know show them that oh you need to do this so this doesn't happen but when a person is just very like uh, I, I can't do that or I'm not going to do that it's kind of like you have to let go and sometimes it is hard to let go So seeing my mom just really not have any discipline or control when it came to my brothers, it irritated me. And then that's when I started to become my own parent, my own disciplinarian, my own check yourselfer. And uh, my brothers and I, we fought viciously. We broke things. We um, threw things. Uh, Sometimes knives were drawn. Sometimes... uh, Things got bloody, stitches were involved, and my mom, she couldn't handle it, and she was very resistant against any type of punishment, and it was like living in a house, not having a parent. So now, as a parent, I'm a balance of both. I'm very lenient on some things, and then when I see that uh, my children are trying to take advantage of my niceness, that's when I hit them with the, okay, this is what's going to go on. This is what I'm not doing. The next time you do this, this is going to happen. You know, some parents are very against um, beatings with a belt or any type of like hitting to get their point across. And I understand that. Maybe that's something that um, doesn't work for you. For me, personally, no. Time out is not going to work for me because they're going to come back and do that again. And they're not going to care about going in their room and having time to themselves. They're not going to care about sitting in a chair. I've seen it over and over again about a kid sitting in quote unquote time out, screaming, kicking, acting, yelling, screaming. I'm just like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. The leather works. My belt works. Um, My tone works. I've perfected my tone where I'm not playing, okay? Do what I told you to do. Don't let me come in there, you know what I'm saying? So I find my balance and 
I think in parenting, you have to find your balance. You don't have to be the mean parent. You don't have to be the super strict parent. You don't have to be the fun all the time parent. You need to be both. You need to be able to talk through the punishment with your kids so they understand that you're not coming from a, I'm going to do this to you because I just feel like it, that you're coming to them in a way where, didn't I say, don't do this? And they're going to be like, yes. Didn't you continue to do it? And they're going to be like, yes. And that's why I did what I did. Now, the fact that I did what I did to you does not mean I don't love you. Does not mean that, you know, I don't want to see you do good or have nice things. It just means that sometimes you do things where you do not deserve them. That conversation is what a lot of adults today need as a kid that they did not get, which is why they continuously act out. They have all these dramatic moments at the workplace, with friends, in relationships, because no one sat them aside during the discipline action or period and explained to them the why behind the reasoning for the outcome behind their behavior. Nobody sat and had that discussion with that child. So they grew up into a a teenager, then a young adult. Then after 25, you on your own. Because I feel like, you know, 18 to 25, you still learning, you still messing up. After 25, I instantly felt like, oh, this is real. Anything I do from this moment on is on me. It's not on my mom. I can't say, oh, my mom never taught me this. I can't say, oh, my dad never taught me this. This is why I do this. No, it's ownership. It's accountability time. And if you teach your kids that at a young age, you don't have to say things 4,508 times. You can say it once and have your disciplinary action the second time. Okay? That discussion to me on the why behind the result is so important because it helps your child be open to feedback. It helps your child think about their actions and it allows your child to always make a choice and a decision when it comes to acting before they think, okay? A lot of people are locked up, um, doing life in prison, uh, dead, or um, caused harm to others because their lack of being able to think before they act. So the best way you can help your kid is to be a balance of nice and a disciplinarian. You have to be both. You can't be really nice, super passive, and think your child is going to come out well balanced. It was very hit or miss that I did not get into more trouble as a teenager, that I did not go against the grain in a negative sense in my 20s, that I am now (laughs) a 32-year-old woman with two kids um, who are very smart, comfortable, intelligent, healthy, beautiful, and I don't mind if I have to do it on my own. I don't mind if, um, you know, People my age get to go out and hang out and not have any um, priorities outside of themselves. I don't mind that. That doesn't, that doesn't put pressure on me because I know I'm secure with the choices I've made to, got, to get myself this far. And the best way you can help your children when it comes to you saying something and telling them to do something and not repeating yourself is to have your boundaries. So... When you say things once, let them know what's going to happen if you have to say it again. That's key, okay? Set your boundaries on what you will accept and what you're not going to accept. You will see what they're teetering on, what they're, you know, trying your patience on. And discipline as you see fit and explain why, okay, after. I don't think... You owe your child an explanation for everything, but I feel like when certain disciplinary actions are done, the aftermath of that is you don't want to leave your child's mind in the wilderness of what just happened. 
you need to talk them through like, okay, this is what I thought. This is what I felt. And that's what happened. That is what happened. What are your thoughts? What can we do better next time? You know what I'm saying? Uh, as long as both of you are learning through it, I think you'll be fine. Now, I'm not telling y'all that you have to beat your kids in order for them to um, get the point and understand and behave themselves. My mother didn't have to uh, beat me uh, in order for me to behave myself, in order for me to never be arrested, in order for me never to do drugs, in order for me never to um, indulge in drinking and sneaking out at night and doing all of the, you know, mischievous things that teenagers do my mom never had to deal with me skipping school or um you know being suspended or going to the principal's office none of that because I knew at a very young age that I was in control of what happened with me um to a certain degree when it came to school now, when it came to protecting myself, uh, I struggled with that because I never felt like my mom was there for protection. I felt like my mom was there to legally sign documents and cook for me and make sure I had somewhere to have my clothes and my bed and, you know, love on me. But as far as like protecting me, I never felt like my mom did that. My dad never stepped up in that way either. My dad was very um, in his ego where he felt like it was my job and my duty to reach out to him and to make sure I called him and to have conversation with him so he could check it off his list of what I did today. You know what I'm saying? And I felt that at a young age. So I had to become um, my protector to the best extent that I could. And uh, that was a struggle. So... The best thing I can tell any parent out there is to find your balance and be honest with your kid. Don't be spiteful with your kid. If there's any trauma that you're dealing with that you haven't worked through, work through that because it is not your child's fault that you had that trauma. It's it's the parents before you. It's the people before that child. Okay? Um... That's it. That is it. I hope that uh, the listening gets better. You know, when it comes to two and three year olds, it's like they their their ears has like a pipe that has an opening on both ends. Don't don't even stress yourself because they're going to push your buttons and they're going to do what they want to do. But stick to your boundaries. Um, when your kids get a little bit older, it gets better. Okay. If you're dealing with teenagers, I pray for you because I am dreading that time. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Cozy Womb. Peace. Bye. Bye. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details.